What is going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jossie Lin Jay, and in today's video, we're gonna be comparing the Dell XPS 15 and the MacBook Pro 13 inch. One of the reasons why I think it's important to compare the 15 inch Dell XPS with the 13 inch MacBook Pro is because they have closer price ranges than the 16 inch MacBook Pro and the Dell XPS 15. Now I know you can see the higher end Dell XPS 15 and MacBook Pro 16 inch having a closer price point. However, if you're looking at a previous generation MacBook Pro or Dell XPS, their price ranges are a lot closer. For example, I bought this Dell XPS 15 about six months ago for $1,100 after tax. We recently got this MacBook Pro 13 inch for my wife for about $850 refurbished. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the 16 inch to compare with the XPS 15, but I think it's really important to compare these two if you're someone who's looking for a laptop that's more budget friendly. This video is definitely dedicated to someone who is looking for a powerful laptop, but you don't wanna break the bank. So you can get both of these laptops for well under $1,500. The MacBook Pro, this is a very sturdy, reliable laptop. And with the Dell XPS, not saying that it isn't sturdy, MacBook just has a history of lasting. So if you're a student, then maybe leaning towards the MacBook Pro 13 inch would be the perfect thing for you. If you're more of a power user, but you don't have a huge budget, which is the situation I was in, because I actually switched from the MacBook Pro 13 inch to the Dell XPS 15. And the reason why I went with the Dell XPS 15 was because the XPS 15 was just a lot cheaper. The MacBook Pro 16 inch that I was using was like $2,500 and it still took a long time compared to the XPS 15 to render you know, 4K videos, whereas the XPS 15 can render um, video footage in Premiere Pro a lot faster. Now, if I was using Final Cut Pro, then the MacBook Pro is optimized to use Final Cut Pro, so that would make sense. But I'm a Premiere Pro user, and the XPS 15 has worked great. When it comes to form factor, the Dell XPS 15 weighs about four pounds, whereas the MacBook Pro 13 inch weighs a little over three pounds. If you are someone who values portability and you wanna be able to put this laptop in a purse or a book bag and you're a student and let's say you live on a big campus that's, you know, takes you 20, 30 minutes to go from one endpoint to the other, then the MacBook Pro would be a great, great option. But if you're someone who really doesn't care about weight, then obviously the XPS 15 would be a great option. And let's say you don't care about render times, you're really using um, the device as a multimedia consumption device, or you're using it um, to do research for papers that you have to write in school, or really anything that doesn't require a lot of GPU or CPU power, the MacBook Pro would be a great option. But if you are someone who kind of, you don't really care, you're not too invested in the Apple ecosystem, then if these laptops are the same price, let's say you're looking for a brand new MacBook Pro, maybe the previous generation, and you're looking for a brand new Dell XPS, um, then the XPS would be great. Um, the reason being is because it comes with more RAM, it comes with more storage, it has a 4K OLED display, and all those um, specs are great. I love consuming media on the XPS 15. It can be quite oversaturated, but I use a monitor anyway, so that doesn't matter as much. But having that extra brightness has made a huge difference. One issue I had with the newer generation of MacBook Pros was that everything was USB Type-C. Now, USB Type-C is great in some instances, like when you have a monitor that's really powerful, like the LG Ultrafine monitor. Those are USB Type-C monitors, so you can actually charge your laptop and you can display um, from your laptop to the monitor and you can daisy chain with other monitors. Phenomenal, it works great. However, USB Type-C is a pretty loose connection. So when I would use dongles, every once in a while, it would disconnect, which sucks, especially when you're a content creator and you're video editing and you're just getting your footage from the SD card and you haven't uploaded it locally to your machine and then it disconnects in the middle 
of you editing, that's a pain. So when it comes to the XPS, you have USB type C, you have two USB type A ports, an SD card spot as well, and a headphone jack. That's super, super viable and an underrated feature. It's so nice to be able to take this SD card out of my camera, plug it right into my XPS 15, and then I could start working a lot faster, opposed to buying dongles and all these things that can be pretty unreliable. A little bit biased, especially, especially towards the group of consumers who are students. Because as a student, you don't want to worry about your laptop not being reliable. And MacBooks just work. With the XPS, you have to obviously install your firmware, so or your malware. Um, you have to install your graphics. Like I had to do some installations to get my graphics to work. Um, Bluetooth, connecting to Bluetooth devices aren't as easy as when it when connecting to Bluetooth devices on um, Apple products like the MacBook. And just as a student, you want to have a laptop that can last you all four years of college. I had the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro. I only had one issue with my MacBook Pro and the only issue I had, well, it was actually a pretty serious issue, but to make a long story short, it only cost $250 a fix. So they fixed the motherboard. They gave me a new display for $250. The only reason why I upgraded from my MacBook Pro to a, Mac, a MacBook Air, and by upgrade, I mean my MacBook Pro was old and my Air and the Air was a lot newer, um, was because the MacBook Pro that I was using was actually like six years old. But if you think about it, if you buy a MacBook Pro that is the same year as the year you're currently in when you start school, there's like a 99% chance that that laptop is gonna last you throughout college unless you treat it horribly. Also, another funny thing, and I, I bring this up in a lot of my MacBook videos, is that pretty much all of my professors use MacBooks. Even though um, most of the students use Windows laptops, I wonder if that's like a budget thing, um, but most of the professors use MacBooks. I wonder if it's because they're the most reliable. When you look at the build and the materials, the build quality of the laptops are both great. The XPS is like one, one heck of a machine, um, but it does feel a little quirky, a little plasticky. I really do like the carbon fiber here. Um, where the keyboard is and where the mouse is. It feels great on my palms. It feels a lot better than like the aluminum of the MacBook Pro. Um, but overall, the MacBook Pro, it just feels like it was just built better. Like it just feels indestructible as my wife said. And you can actually open it up with one finger. I know that's not, the, that's not a deal breaker, but it makes a difference. Um, I am a bit frustrated though that the XPS build quality isn't you know as good as the MacBook Pro that I had previously and that my wife is using. Um, actually the hinge, the one of the cover for the hinge actually broke. It broke off, a piece of it broke off on my XPS um, 15 and I, I don't ever recall dropping this. And the funny thing is with the MacBook, if I drop my MacBook, I mean, pfft, the hinge isn't gonna break. So, you know, you're in college, you're moving around all the time, you know, things happen. And I did drop, drop my MacBook. I don't recommend doing it, but um, it's pretty indestructible. These two laptops are literally the most popular laptops. And it's so exciting to actually see Windows laptops um, upgrading not only from a software and hardware standpoint, but also from just an aesthetic standpoint to be able to compete with MacBooks because I think a majority of the population view MacBooks as, you know, pretty much overpriced laptops, you know, under spec. We'll see um, how well the newest iteration of laptops do. I know the 16 inch was a success and I really like that laptop. It's just so expensive and you can get the XPS for a much, much cheaper price. But um, if you wanna see me compare the Dell XPS 15 with the MacBook Pro 16 inch, I love for you all to give this video a thumbs up. All right, so that concludes this video. In the end, it really comes down to 
whatever laptop meets the preferences and needs that you have. But in my recommendation, I think the MacBook Pro is the perfect option for a student. It has all the specs that you need that should get you through college. And then for the more power users, so your software engineers and content creators, I think the Dell XPS 15 would be a better option than the 13 inch MacBook Pro. With that being said, that concludes this video. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it at all. Comment down below some of your thoughts, what your favorite laptop is. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I love for you all to become a part of the community and I'll see you all soon. Have a blessed rest of your week. Peace. Thank you.